Hello, and welcome to The Signal, Workplace NL's health and safety podcast. Workplace NL is the Workers' Compensation Board in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. The focus is to promote safe and healthy workplaces, provide return to work programs, and offer compensation to injured workers and their dependents. This series of podcasts will provide you with the latest information on how workplaces can protect the health and safety of workers. Please enjoy the show. Today's episode, The Impacts of Hearing Loss, illustrates how hearing loss affects all aspects of a person's life, work, home, and in the community. Hearing loss is something that can't be fixed. It's a lifelong condition that is challenging for those living with it. We will begin today with Brenda Greenslade, Executive Director of the Newfoundland and Labrador Fish Harvesting Safety Association. She'll give us an overview of the prevalence of hearing loss in the fishing industry, how fish harvesters can reduce the risk of hearing loss, and what the fishing industry are doing to prevent it. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Deanne. So just how prevalent is hearing loss in the fishing industry? So if we were to look at the records, um, the documentation that we have on hearing loss and fish harvesters, we know that um, based on the claims submitted by fish harvesters to Workplace NL for hearing loss and deafness related to employment, we know that fish harvesters are in the top 10 most frequent occupations reported. Wow. So that would include claims by mm-hmm. skippers and deckhands. But if we were to ask generally yeah. how common is hearing loss among fish harvesters, I would say it's fairly common given that the majority of fish harvesters have been fishing for a long time and have been exposed to high noise levels in the course of their employment. Mm -hmm. So the provincial occupational health and safety regulations have a regulation where noise must not exceed 85 decibels on the A-weighted scale over an eight-hour workday, a 40-hour work Mm -hmm. week. And we know, based on research that we've done with researchers from SafetyNet, that hazardous noise can be present while steaming from engines and the the, uh, propeller on the vessel above 100 decibels. Wow. So that's quite above uh, the 85 Mm -hmm. decibel level. Uh, We know that pot haulers used in crab and whelk fishing can generate noise as high as 87 decibels Mm -hmm. with peaks of 139 decibels. And shrimp fishing can generate noise equal to 88.5 decibels. Sane fishing can be as loud as 86 decibels. So all above Mm -hmm. the, the regulation, the minimum requirement. Ground fishing is usually less noisy and can range between 79 to 82 decibels on the A-weighted scale. So the risk to hearing from noise exposure depends on how loud the noise is and the length of exposure. Right. But when you think about the age of our fish harvesters and the work that they they do, then I would say that hearing loss is underreported. Yeah. It's really eye-opening, those uh, those statistics that you just reviewed. Mm-hmm. And you can certainly see how fish harvesters are in the top 10 mm-hmm. for hearing loss claims at Workplace NL. Mm-hmm. So how can fish harvesters reduce their risk of hearing loss? There's many different, you know, techniques and tools and programs. How can they use these to reduce their risk? Well, the Fish Harvesting Safety Association is in the business of education Mm -hmm. and building awareness. And our population is fish harvesters. So um, the first step in preventing noise-induced hearing loss is to recognize if there is hazardous noise levels in your workplace. And I just love that um, that little rhyme that uh, Workplace NL put out years ago, and it really mm-hmm. sticks with me. Um, spot the hazards, assess the risk, find a safer way every day. And um, I use it all the time Mm -hmm. because, as you know, hazard assessment, risk assessment is is pretty complex. It's very difficult for people who are not safety professionals to to take to it. And um, so so I use that very simple Mm -hmm. uh, little safe acronym to talk about um, noise. So spotting the hazard. 
the very first thing that uh, I encourage harvesters to be aware of is to know that noise is a problem when people have to raise their voices to be heard. Mm. Very, very basic. And um, uh, so that's one thing. Or if they're around noise and they start to experience ringing in their ears Mm -hmm. after being exposed to a noisy environment. So that's a really good indication that noise is a strong hazard Mm -hmm. uh, in your workplace that you're exposed to. Uh, So that's the first clue that there's a problem. But noise can change over time, so it's important to know if the volume of noise exceeds a safe level. And uh, it's important to measure the noise with a sound level meter. And um, people say, well, that's an expense, and how much does that cost? And if I hire somebody to do that, how much is it going to cost? So I just recommend to people to download uh, uh, the noise app and That's just right. to get a spot check exactly. of what the noise is. So yeah. if you're shouting to be heard, raising your voice over the noise to communicate with someone, that's the first indication. The second indication is to use an app on your phone. Mm -hmm. All all harvesters have cell phones these days. I mean, just about everybody does. And to use that. And and that will give you a good indication that there may be a problem. Mm-hmm. Now, to to get more into the specifics, you need to dig right. deeper exactly. and, um, and and do a greater assessment. And it may mean having a professional come in and to do those readings for you. Right. So once you know that the noise is above eighty five decibels on a a weighted scale over an eight hour period, forty hour work. Day, uh, work week, mm-hmm. um, then you have to control the noise. Right. So some ways that you can do that just very quickly, when you purchase equipment, check it, make sure that it's emitting the lowest noise possible that will do the job that you need. Uh, isolate your engine rooms. We right. know that engines are a big problem. They emit uh, high noise levels. Insulate your engine room with the sound absorbing material is really important and um, try to modify the time you spend around the noise if that's possible if you're on a vessel vessel. uh, you could be gone for days at sea and uh, the engine is always working right so um, what do you do yeah so you you try and control the noise at the source Wear the personal protective equipment, earmuffs to protect Mm -hmm. your hearing. Uh, If you're checking going down in your engine room, make sure that you wear your your earmuffs. If you're working around um, haulers that emit high noise levels, wear your muffs. Just make sure that uh, you purchase the ones that you can also have uh, communication with your your uh, coworker, your right. deckhand. Right. So so that's really important. And um, if you're concerned that you have that you may have hearing loss, uh, make an appointment to have your hearing checked. Mm-hmm. You know that would be getting. That's not a control measure. Right. That's more of um, a conclusion. If you have an audiogram, and you find that it's not in the normal range, your hearing loss is occupationally related, then put in a claim to yeah. workers' compensation yeah. for that. So what is the industry doing in, in working, I guess, with fish harvesters to prevent hearing loss? Well, I think probably one of the best things that we have done in recent years is to work with researchers mm-hmm. who are studying noise. Um, and they come from Safety Net, uh, from the engineering program at the university. And uh, they have students and uh, PhD candidates who are studying noise. And it has been a great relationship because we help them by matching them to Mm -hmm. harvesters and vessels. And they actually go on the vessels and and do the assessments, the risk assessments, and determine where the, the noise levels are. So that's what we've been able to do. Um, to determine, you know, how risky is this business yeah, for, such a for great hearing loss? Partnership to get to, you know, the source absolutely of what's creating the noise and and working together to get the levels of the sound, I guess, mm-hmm. down to more acceptable uh, levels. Yeah. So they've been working with small scale fisheries mm-hmm. and the larger vessels. And uh, have been going out and doing the noise level assessments 
uh, determine where they are in various parts of the boat. So they work with the small open boats and are uh, checking the engine noises. And then they're checking in the larger decked vessels, the engine rooms, and to determine where the noise is and then um, how far it travels uh, to the sleeping quarters mm-hmm. and, you know, above deck. So we've gotten some really valuable information. And then they've also made recommendations right. as to what can be done to control the noise. Yeah. So we've taken those findings yeah. and we have communicated it to fish harvesters. So I think that's probably uh, one of the best things that, that we've done. Of course, it, it works with our goal, which is to improve the health and safety of fish harvesters mm-hmm. and to save lives at sea. Mm-hmm. Through that, we're able to promote best practices uh, that, that harvesters can do. I guess the other thing that the industry is doing, and this was done through the FFAW, through mm-hmm. the union, uh, where they helped lobster uh, harvesters go from using gas-powered yeah. haulers to electric-powered haulers, quite a reduction in the noise levels. Wow. Mm-hmm. And um, there was an incentive for uh, harvesters to, to go with the electric. And I've been out on the wharfs, and I see harvesters uh, demonstrating mm-hmm. their electric haulers and talking about the difference between an electric and a gas-powered and uh, just how quiet it is. And, of course, it eases communication Absolutely. Uh, between crew, so for instructions. And, that's right. Uh, you know, that's really important from a safety perspective as well. For sure. So, And then there's different things that are happening with regards to the type of rope and um, gear that people are using in their haulers because that reduces noise as well. Just some of the things. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more, but those are those are the ones that come top of mind that are probably um, the most popular ones right, right. now that, that we right. know about. Well, thank you very much for joining me here today. Okay. You're kindly welcome. Today I'm joined by Amy Fitzpatrick. Amy is the Marketing and Communications for Made Safe NL and Larry Pinkson. Larry is a fish harvester. Welcome to the show, Amy and Larry. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. My first question is just to get a bit of a feel for Larry's background. So Larry, can you just give us an idea as to your work history? I have been a fisherman for 47 years. Uh, I started in the summer months when I was 13, in between school. I, I worked on a small long liner for right up through the summer months on to I graduated. And when I graduated in 1977, I was uh, just 16. I was after uh, fishing three years. And uh, after that, I really went fishing pretty much full time I did leave it to go to do a mechanics uh, course in Beaver trade school but that didn't really work out and there's not one year in between that that I haven't fished there's been some was less than others especially when I was younger but when Mm -hmm. I got back in it me and my brother got our own enterprise back in in the 80s to mid 80s somewhere around here and pretty much since then we're fishing full-time uh, always, and I've been uh, an active sealer at various intervals right. uh, during that time. Uh, 47 years is a long time. It's a lifetime. So we asked you to join us today uh, based on the fact that you have a hearing loss injury. Can you give us a little background about how that occurred? Uh, gradual, I would, uh, I would say, uh, going through... Starting fishing when I was young, uh, didn't really, I sort of knew it was something going on, but not totally. I think it was really, uh, really made aware of it when my uh, girls uh, started attending school right. and a high school, really, when in Bayvert, because they went to Bayvert and uh, to attend high school. And they were noticed of being loud. So the actually the teachers at the time uh, requested that they have an hearing test done. Oh! So the teachers noticed that your daughters were speaking loudly. Yes. Yes. Wow! And then they came to realize her hearing was fine, 
and ask her the question, do you have somebody in your household that's hard hearing? And that is. <laughs> so, you know, and that's when uh, really made aware of it, but I still didn't do right. a lot to protect to protect myself. So, Larry, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be out on the boats? Like, what what is the the sounds that you hear on a daily basis? The background is really a constant roar from the engine. Yeah, that that's always there. But you hear other noises. If you got the fishing gear, it depends on what's going on. With regards to me myself, I think that contributed to the hearing loss. Uh, when in '95, when we really got our home. Uh, long long liner that I used to be right under the crab holler all day long. Right. And that crab holler would be screeching. And even back then we had what we would I would call the old rope, the old fashioned rope that the ropes that are used today is made out of a, a different material and it doesn't make as much noise. So I used to be stood under that sometimes for fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hours a day except for when you have a break lunch break or whatever this girl he was shooting out gear but say okay if we all six strings you were under the hour and a half so about eight to ten hours a day in any given day and i know from the earring loss that one ear is worse than the other one right mm -hmm. and that one would be where i was stood stood up there all the day that roar constant and even uh when I went and got my own enterprise. I was still there. I was taking the rope from the girdy, and I used to be doing other things. So uh, that led to it. And there, there's a even how many times you be in sitting down having a meal, and especially in our boats when we had the smaller 45 boats, the floors wasn't insulated or nothing, so it was hot. Not as loud, obviously up there as it right. was down the engine room, but it was pretty loud. Loud when you're sleeping, and it's, and it's even sometimes, on, like right now, on the deck, I was out last year, I mean, when the people were on the deck most of the time, I can't, I couldn't understand uh, right. what they were saying. Due to safety reasons, this is my opinion, you're out on a deck, you got five, six people working on a deck. You cannot be there where you're not hearing no noises. You could you have your head turned and somebody's, the line goes wrapped around somebody or mm -hmm. somebody might slip and fall or fall overboard. It, yeah. it happens out there. It's a very, it's not known as the most dangerous occupation for no reason. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if somebody is is in trouble or needs your attention because something has happened, you got to be able to hear them. So to be protecting your ears in that work environment. Now, having said that, there's no trouble to be putting on, putting on the muffs when you go down and I've been doing it for the last uh, 10, 12 years fishing. Mm -hmm. When I really realized I would say there's probably there's not much longer than that that I went and got my earring aids. And so when uh, you're out on the boat, there's really no getting away from noise. None. It's not like you work in a factory where you leave after your shift you go home to your house where you don't have those noises around. So it's something that you're constantly exposed to when you're out on that boat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, over the years, there's times we'd be out two, two, two weeks a month, really, for sealing. You right. might come in and offload and gone again. I've done trips in up in OB and I said Turbot, that's between Resolution Island and Green Bay, uh, Greenland, and you'll be uh, three weeks, so you're living on the boat. I like the statement you said, there's no getting away mm -hmm. from the noise. Yeah, It's unavoidable. It, it's a part of the job description, for lack of a better explanation, yeah. in the fishing yep. industry. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I, I, I spoke to safety symposium there in Gander one year mm -hmm. and, and I emphasized to the people in the room, look, don't wait till you get to where I'm at. Yeah. When it's it's too late. Yeah. So if you can do anything to minimize 
that damage that potentially can occur anyway, make sure you do it. And I know myself, I've been on the boat, and I've told boys, don't go down to the engine room, put, mm-hmm. put your muscle on. Some do it. Yeah. A lot do it, but some more don't. Well, don't yeah. Don't see and it. that's a part of of a hearing conservation program mm-hmm. that is required mm-hmm. in legislation that employers have to first identify those uh, tools, equipment, um, job tasks that create that noise that might be over the recommended decibels, that they evaluate the risk then, how it can affect the worker, and that they choose the most reasonable and effective way to protect the worker from that hearing loss. You're, you're right, 100%, because if I go back to my history, I wasn't made aware. We weren't told that, look, this is the environment you're in. There, there's, there's a lot of uh, danger here for the lead to hearing loss. Yeah. I didn't know anything about that. didn't know what until it actually happened because we weren't educated. That's, that's the way we are. Like, uh, I can attest to it that I didn't pay a lot of, even when I was when I knew I was having earring loss, but now at stage I am now, and for the last number of years, when I realize uh, the problems it creates, and uh, and the difficulties that you have sometimes in just basic communication, you don't really fathom that until it actually. Uh, happens and you're there in the situation. Right. Right? So, I mean, I know myself now from, you go out there, my TV was on now, closed caption was on. Mm-hmm. All the time for to get to get right. the dialogue. I haven't went, I know you can get that little thing, but I haven't went to a movie in a theater in years because it's so difficult to get, right. to get the, the dialogue, right? What do you think that we can do I guess, as an industry, as, you know, as a profession, occupational health and safety, workplace NL, made safe, what can we do to prepare them to protect their hearing and to promote, I guess, hearing conservation? The start is what we're doing here today. Right. To reach yeah. more people, to uh, educate people to the dangers of what not protecting your Earring will lead to, mm-hmm. and I'm a perfect example of that. Uh, if is there anything done on the boats? Look, this is the noises that you encounter. This is the decibels. Do you realize what you're exposing yourself to, mm-hmm. and what you're going to uh, lead to, uh, potentially lead to down the road? From there, with that done, okay. Now, what can we do through whatever technology or whatever to make sure that we can communicate? To each other, why we're out there, uh, communicate uh, <clears throat> in a timely manner right. for safety reasons. Yeah, timely right. and clear. I'm assuming. Right. You need to be able to convey messages time in a timely fashion, but also clear. Yes. So that everybody can hear what's happening. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, even myself now. I mean, I am totally deaf in a number of sounds. Eye right. frequency sound. Mm-hmm. That's, that's gone. Yeah. And some of that is, is even can lead to safety uh, issues because I've been on my boat where you have a radar or you have a GPS that got a uh, alarm on telling you when you're a half mile or a mile, depending on what you got it set at. And I've heard, I've had boys on the, on the deck that show up to me, what's going off? What alarm is going off out there now? Well, there's nothing going off here. Well, yes, it is. We can hear it, but it would be right in front of me, but oh, I wouldn't hear it. So you it. can't hear the high-pitched Because sounds. that high-frequency wow. sound, right? Yeah. So, and and uh, it's distinguishing in a conversation, too. It's distinguishing uh, what's uh, being said a lot of times, yeah. the words. Yeah. I've been many times somewhere when uh, and even my wife said, uh, okay. What did you? What did I just say? And I'll well go over and it was totally wrong, right? Yeah. Totally yeah. not what she she said at all. So I mean, it it causes uh, issues because I've been I've been in conversation with people and I just didn't want to say, "Pardon, what did you say?" So there's times I've never got 
the conversation. Exactly. It, You've missed out. Missed out. You've missed, missed out. out. That mm-hmm. was going to be my next question is how does it affect you? We know how it affects you in your work life, but how does it affect you in your personal life? Because you have two daughters, your wife, an adorable puppy dog that just visited us in the window. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how does it affect as far as outside of work or what are the impacts? Uh, besides, uh, the communication problems, uh, it always also, and I guess the, the communication issues lead to some friction sometimes. Mm. And even, uh, not only, uh, in my own life, but when, when I was out, uh, I did, uh, lab and safety courses since last fall. And the first thing I do when I go in. Now, I I say, uh, everybody's here. I said, I got an earring problem. You can see the earring aids. And I said, if I look at you and I said, I get up and I'm walking down, if you're saying something, that's because I can't quite, might, might not quite hear what you're saying. So I'm coming and, and I'll ask you, what did you say? So I can, uh, you know, yeah. get it. Because I, I just can't sit there and, and people talking at me uh, coming at me off from all all sides yeah. i won't get i won't get it that's like if we're into a lot of times i'm all right my hearing is good as we are right now but if we get a lot of noise and background mm-hmm. noise i don't i don't hear very well at all you would have and difficulty with that the kitchen party i'd say yeah right? and i don't get the conversation i'll get the conversation with a couple of people that i'm around yeah and and People got to remember, an hearing aid is exactly what it says. It's an aid. It doesn't replace Good hearing point. loss. Mm-hmm. That's and right. even with, like this one's got three settings on it, even when it reduces the background noise. If you're in a, in a like I'll say, a kitchen party uh, effect or out in a shed party or something, Earring aids are, in my personal opinion, they're useless. Mm-hmm. You can do what you want to because you get more of a roar and you got less because then it's picking up other sounds around you that you wouldn't, I'm not yeah. picking up if it's just the three of us right there. Yeah. So I don't even wear them when I'm going in that environment. So in an environment like that, does it almost muddle all the sound into Ab- one big roar? Absolutely. You can't hardly decipher anything even if there's somebody up in your hear or like i i've did it and sometimes i've went somewhere and i just had to take them out and put them in my pocket right mm-hmm. so and and it leads to uh dare i say <laughs> uh frictions in a marriage mm-hmm. because uh communication and there's times like my wife has to because uh, she might be somewhere and she just talks loud to me and she got it because I'm somewhere and she's used to talking loud to me. Then there's times I'm right alongside of her yeah. and she's almost like a shouting to me then and <laughs> you don't have to shout. And yeah, say, I'm right here next to you. Yeah, and yeah. then she'll say, I got to shout at you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's just not intentional. But uh, so how many times have I said to Brenda, it's very frustrating to you, so can you imagine how frustrating it is to me? Mm-hmm. Right? How, fust- how frustrating Absolutely. it is to me, because I'm the one with the earring lost. I'm the one that a lot of times can't understand what people are saying, and <clears throat> it's got somewhat uh, worse. The second last time I went in, I had, uh, like, they'll give you a test for uh, words, understanding. Right. And left ear, right ear. I had 100% right in, I can't remember which side now, and 60% in the other one. The last time I was went in, I only had 50% in one and 60% in the other one. Of actually being able to understand the words. Mm-hmm. So it's getting dramatically worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. Even without the continued exposure to the, to yes. the sounds on the yes. boat. Yes, yes. And that's, and that's why, uh, now, like I said, I was still out. And that's like even if you got a uh, fishing master's ticket, you got to pass a hearing test, right? Right. Every time you renew it, you got to go oh. do a hearing test every two years. And uh, like I'm just barely getting getting by. you got to do it with your hearing aids in. I'm, 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 I'm getting so by. So your hearing can so affect it, your licensing yes, as yes, a master. Yes, for your, your, uh, for your ticket, right? Wow. Your fishing master's ticket. So, uh uh, when I went in and they did it and like, well, 
it's got to go to Transport mm -hmm. Canada before you issue your ticket, but I did it, but borderline. Now, if the next time I do it, who knows? I, right. There's no guarantees, right? But I, I haven't felt that there's been any substantial hearing that I've had any uh, it lasts in the last couple of years, but I haven't been exposed to, to as much noise either, right? Mm -hmm. So That must be scary for you, though, to know that it's continuing to degrade. So every time you go in for that hearing test, oh. waiting to see what the result's going to come back, yeah. considering it's been such a huge part of your life for the last 47 years. Yes. And I never actually went and got my tickets until nine years ago. I, I used to have in lieu of a ticket of uh, class four, but I just wanted to do it. So I went in and, and done the, my fishing masters, took a winter and went to Lewisport and done my fishing masters class four and three at the same time. And uh, the first time I went in to get my ticket renewed, like, like was five years after. And I said, oh my God, I might not be able to get my ticket renewed after taking six months out of my life right. and doing nothing, only studying. Mm -hmm. So to get the exams, and that was very, very disconcerting. I was really worried about that. So uh, having was, hearing loss can affect your progression as a fish harvester. Uh, yes, even if you wanted to. Uh, okay, so you wanted to uh, uh, move up and get your tickets, and then you wanted to go up to be a full-fledged captain. Right. It can absolutely affect uh, that ability to... Right. Uh, Move ahead, I guess. Just, I guess, from a career perspective, it makes even more sense to protect your hearing. Oh, for sure. For anybody that is interested in and uh, moving up and say, you know, get a bigger boat, take over their own yeah. enterprise, it can have an effect on the tickets. What advice would you offer 16-year-old Larry? Protect your hearing. The same thing as I told the, the young guys on the boat last year. Yeah. You know what you're doing? Yeah. You're going down the air. You're doing protect your hearing. Make sure you don't want to end up like like me. Yeah. And uh, there's times I says I've said to my wife, I said, I hope and pray. I said I don't lose my hearing altogether because mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be awful. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I mean, I do. I I do like. Uh, uh, I got a workshop that I go in to do some stuff, so I got my hearing all the time. And mm -hmm. unless I'm, I'm not. If I'm using tools, they're on right. me all the time, right? And it's still not too late for me. Hopefully, <laughs> some good years ahead of me nice. yet. I'm, I'm 62, so I hope to have, uh, you know, some good years ahead of me yet. Thank you so much, Larry, for inviting us into your home today and having this really, really important conversation about your experience with hearing loss in your daily life. Thank you, Amy, for joining me. Um, it's great to have these partnerships with organizations such as Made Safe. Thank you very much and have a safe, happy and healthy day. Thank you for joining us today. Transcripts are available to use in your workplace to increase workers' knowledge in various occupational health and safety topics. Visit WorkplaceNL.ca for more information on the services we provide to workplaces. Feel free to share the signal on social media to improve workplace health and safety everywhere. Thank you, and have a safe and healthy day.